In the meantime, we're continuing our coverage on a story not far from here. Allegations of rape at a Rockville, Maryland high school has created a firestorm over immigration policy as the two suspects each illegally entered the United States last year. Now, Maryland is just one of nearly 30 states that has either proposed or passed bills that deal with sanctuary policies. The state's bill has become a major issue in the wake of the Rockville case. So let's bring in our fair and balanced panel on immigration poly, policy. Tom Javits is the vice president of immigration policy with the American, with the Center for American Progress, and Bob Dane, executive director of the Federation for American Immigration Reform. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Bob, I want to start with you because when we hear both of these arguments, those who argue for sanctuary cities, those who argue against sanctuary cities, both say they make jurisdictions safer. So which is it, sir? Uh, sanctuary uh, policies and the ordinances are dangerous. They're counterproductive to reforming immigration the way that the public wants, and they defy federal law. Look, this rape was a crime, but this was a crime exacerbated, created by open borders, lax enforcement, catch and release policies, and the proliferation of these sanctuary city policies, 300 of them all over America that aid and abet and welcome and reward illegal immigration. If you build it, they will come. Now you've got 300,000 illegal aliens in the state of Maryland, $2 billion a year in cost, but this goes way beyond monetary cost. This is a public safety risk, and this woman who was allegedly brutally raped in a bathroom stall knows that all too well. All right, Tom, I want to bring you in here because uh, we heard Bob mention uh, the state of Maryland. And the state of Maryland is just one of uh, states across the country that are considering actually making the entire state a sanctuary state. We heard from Governor Larry Hogan in the wake of this alleged incident. I want to play a quick soundbite from him and then get your reaction. Take a listen. I'm not sure I can give assurances that a crime would never happen in our state, but we're working very hard to get to the bottom of this one and to find out how it was allowed to happen. As you know, there's also a, a bill here uh, in the legislature which I threatened to veto, which would uh, um, make Maryland a sanctuary state and prohibit our local uh, and state law enforcement or interfere with their ability to cooperate with uh, federal law enforcement. So, Tom, you heard there the governor said that, that this bill would prohibit lawmakers from really falling in line with federal lawmakers. What, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, so let me just start off by saying what we're talking about here is an allegation of serious sexual assault on a high school campus. Um, I've got two young kids, uh, and the allegations here are stomach-turning, really. So, uh, I mean, that's something that I think uh, I'm, I'm very heartened by the fact that the police apprehended two suspects very quickly. They're in custody. Prosecutors are going to be proceeding with pretty serious charges. Um, and I think we're going to hopefully see a fair and just result uh, coming out of the criminal justice system. Um, we're also seeing the school administrator take this situation very seriously. They're doing a very serious review of their security protocols in order to make sure they can ensure this kind of thing doesn't happen again. Um, we also know this isn't the first time. But my question for you is, is that my question for you is sort of, sort of a yeah. larger picture here. When we, when we have these jurisdictions who interpret differently how they need to be handling immigration, how can there be any type of immigration reform or, or handling immigration really across? The nation. Right. I mean, the, so the reason why I want to, if you will, I mean, so the reason I would address this as a public safety and a and a sexual assault uh, on on campus uh, concern is because that's really all this is about. There, there, there's nothing unique here about this case uh, that deals with the immigration status of these individuals. They had never been uh, they had never encountered local law enforcement previously. They have never. There's no allegation that there are any gang affiliations. Um, there's no indication here whatsoever that the fact that they are immigrants has any impact on the crime that they committed. And in fact, going back to something that Bob mentioned, there have been actually numerous studies about the impact of uh, the, both these sanctuary jurisdiction policies on criminality and on immigrants broadly on crime. And what the, what the research shows time and time again is that immigrants are far less likely than native-born people to be incarcerated and that as larger right, numbers of immigrants... I want to let you respond to yeah. that. I'll concede the point that legal immigrants uh, commit crimes at a rate less than the general population. That's because they have an incentive to do so, otherwise they'll be deported. But illegal aliens, according to the U.S. Sentencing Commission, commit crimes, federal crimes, at a much higher rate. Look, you know, one of the reasons the public in Maryland is mad about this is because the school officials in Montgomery County are going through this ornamentation to appease the public with more cameras and hall monitors, when in fact they're missing the, ele the elephant in the room, which is immigration. If the public school officials and the, and, and the school board 
want to put their money where their mouth is, they need to recognize that they want safe schools, they need safe communities, and they need to push back against these dangerous and idiotic policies promoted by the leftist politicians in Maryland and all across the country. Right. In, in, in 600 right. jurisdictions around the country, law enforcement and local officials have adopted policies that limit the circumstances in which they will hold people unconstitutionally uh, who have a base solely upon a request by immigration enforcement. Yeah, we are seeing, and that, and that we are seeing in law, I'm sorry, we are, we are seeing the Los Angeles Police Department uh, uh, chief just said two days ago that we're seeing a dramatic and unprecedented decline in complaints about sexual assault by Latinos because of the immigration policy of this administration. We have seen in Denver, the city prosecutor had to drop prosecutions of sexual assault because immigrant victims are afraid to come forward. That's what makes communities safer. What makes communities safer is when individuals who are victims of crime and witnesses of crime can come forward and cooperate. And that's why the studies okay, time and time again demonstrate that. Look, uh, one of the reasons uh, we're seeing a buckling by local politicians uh, to oppose sanctuary policies is because the ACLU is all over their back threatening a lawsuit. Tell them to go pound sand and tell them that your kid's safety in the classroom okay. is more important than their politics. Bob, thank you. Bob, Tom, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. We very much appreciate it. This conversation uh, will continue, I'm sure.